Hello students, today we will talk about the health, determinants of health and how the infection is caused. Coming to definition of health, the widely accepted definition of health is that given by World Health Organization in 1948 in the preamble of its constitution which is as follows. Health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely an absence of disease or infirmity with an ability to lead a socially and economically productive life. This definition is more of an idealistic goal than of a realistic proposition. This concept of health as defined by WHO is broad and positive in its implications, sets out a standard for positive health, symbolizes the aspirations of the people, represents an overall objective or goal towards which nations should survive. Operational definition for health as given by WHO is health means there is no obvious evidence of disease and that the person is functionally normally that is within the normal limits of variation to the standards of health criteria generally accepted for one's age, sex, community and geographic region and the several organs of the body are functioning adequately in relation to one another. Coming to the dimensions of health, health is multidimensional. These dimensions function and interact with one another, though they have their own nature. Physical dimension, mental dimension, social dimension, spiritual dimension, emotional dimension, vocational dimension and others. Coming to physical dimension, the state of physical health implies the notion of perfect functioning of the body. It conceptualizes health biologically as a state in which every cell and every organ is functioning at optimum capacity and in perfect harmony with the rest of the body. The signs of physical health in an individual are good complexion, clear skin, bright eyes, lustrous hair, firm flesh and not too much fat, sweet breath, good appetite, sound sleep, regular bowel activity, regular bladder activity, smooth easily coordinated body movements. Measurement of physical health, self-assessment of overall health, enquiry into symptoms of health and risk factors, enquiry into medications, enquiry into levels of activity, use of standardized questionnaire for assessment of certain disorders and use of medical services, nutritional assessment, death rate, infant mortality rate, life expectancy, maternal mortality rate. Coming to mental dimension, good mental health is the ability to respond to the many varied experiences of life with flexibility and a sense of purpose. Attributes of a mentally healthy person a mentally healthy person is free from internal conflict, well adjusted, get along well with others, accepts criticisms and is not easily upset, searches for his identity, has a strong sense of self-esteem, knows about self, the needs, problems and goals that is self-actualization. He has a good control, balances rationally and emotionally faces problems and tries to solve them intelligently that is coping with stress and anxiety. Coming to assessment of mental health can be done using well framed questionnaire on mental status and psychological diagnosis. Social dimension. Social well-being implies harmony and integration within the individual, between each individual and other members of society and between individuals and world in which they live. It has been defined as the quantity and quality of an individual's interpersonal ties and the extent of involvement with the community. The social dimension of health include the levels of social skills one possesses, social functioning and the ability to see oneself as a member of the society. Assessment of social dimension. Assessment of level of social skills, financial matters, residential matters, social network of the individual. Next is the spiritual dimension. Spiritual health refers to that part of the individual 
which reaches out and strives for meaning and purpose in life. It is the intangible thing that transcends physiology and psychology. Spiritual dimension includes integrity, principles and ethics, purpose in life, commitment to some higher being, belief in certain concepts that are beyond explanation. Next is the emotional dimension. While mental health is seen as knowing or cognition, emotional health relates to feeling. Study of psychobiology separates these two dimensions successfully. Vocational dimension. When work is fully adapted to human goals, capacities and limitations, work often plays a role in promoting both physical and mental health. The importance of vocational dimension is exposed when individuals suddenly lose their jobs or faced with mandatory retirement. Many individuals consider this dimension as merely a source of income, but others associate vocation with success in life. Others are the philosophical dimension, cultural dimension, socio-economic dimension, environmental dimension, educational dimension, nutritional dimension, curative dimension, and preventive dimension. Health is multifactorial, depends on the interplay of a number of complex factors which exert their influence on lifestyle of an individual. Both generic and environmental factors interact with health of an individual and make either promote or cause deleterious effects on health. Let's see the determinants of health, biological determinants, behavioral and socio-cultural conditions, environmental determinants, socio-economic conditions, health services, age and gender. Coming to biological determinants, they are hereditary and gender. Behavioral and socio-economic conditions, also known as lifestyle or the way people live, lifestyle reflects social values attributes, activities. Lifestyle is learned through social interaction with parents, peer groups, friends, siblings, teachers, etc. Social and mass media. Lifestyle disorders. They are the coronary heart disease, obesity, lung cancer, oral cancer and diabetes. Diseases related to behavioral defects are infections, due to unsanitary conditions, fads, fallacies, ignorance, poor nutrition, wrong food habits, customs, poor economic conditions. Environmental determinants, they are the internal environment, each and every component of the human system and its functioning. The external environment includes physical, biological and psychological components. Micro environment includes eating habits, smoking, drinking and use of drugs. Occupational environment includes the socio-economic and moral environment. Socio-economic conditions. Various socio-economic conditions that influence health include the economic status, education, nutrition, employment, housing and political system. Economic status. GNP is a widely accepted measure of economic performance. Economic status determines the purchasing power, standard of living, quality of life, family size, pattern of disease and deviant behavior in the community. Improvement in the economic status also can lead to increased incidence of disease of affluence like coronary heart disease, diabetes mellitus, obesity, etc. Education. Female literacy has an influence on health. Lack of education may affect personal decision making skills and leads to underuse of services coupled with binding to tradition and beliefs. Employment or occupation. Being occupied not only leads to economic benefit but also mental peace, hence productive work promotes health. Political systems. Political influences are more in implementation of health technologies. Decisions related to resource allocation, 
manpower policy, choice of technology and availability of health services, accessibility to health services. Coming to health services, health services that are provided include immunization, provision of safe water, care of pregnant and lactating mothers, care of infants, preschool children and adolescents. Providing nutrition and health services will facilitate people to seek help and thus be preventive. Care has to be taken to avoid underutilization of these services. Age and gender. Chronic diseases accompany the aged. The elderly population deserves special attention. Now, other related fields which contribute to health of a population include agriculture and food, education, industry, social welfare, rural development, adoption of policies in economic and social fields such as employment opportunities, increased wages, prepaid medical programs and family support systems. Thus, medicine is not the sole contributor to health and well-being of population. Coming to the infection spread, the communicable diseases are transmitted from the reservoir to the susceptible host. Source of the reservoir. A reservoir is defined as an any person or animal or arthropod, plant, soil, substance or combination of these in which an infectious agent lives and multiplies. Mode of transmission includes direct transmission and indirect transmission. Direct transmission further includes direct contact, droplet infection, contact with soil, inoculation into skin or mucosa, transplacental or vertical. Direct contact, infection may be transmitted from skin to skin, mucosa to mucosa, mucosa to skin. For example, Direct contact is seen in sexually transmitted diseases, in AIDS, leprosy, skin and eye infections. Droplet infection, this is the direct projection of spray of droplets of saliva and nasopharyngeal secretions during coughing, sneezing, spitting. This is seen in respiratory infections, cold, fever, tuberculosis, etc. Contact with the soil. Direct exposure of susceptible skin to soil contaminated with agents. This is seen in hookworm and tetanus infections. Inoculation into skin or mucosa. Disease agents may be directly inoculated into the skin or mucosa, which is seen in dog bite, contaminated needles and syringes. Transplacental transmission. This is the transmission of agents through placenta example in AIDS, Hepatitis B and Syphilis. Coming to indirect transmission which includes vehicle born, vector born which may be mechanical or biological, airborne further into droplet nuclei and dust, fomite born, unclean hands and fingers. Vehicle born, this implies transmission of the agent through water, food, ice, blood, serum and biological products. Most common are food and water. Some agents develop in the vehicle while some others use it purely as a vehicle which is seen in typhoid fever, diarrhea, cholera, polio, malaria. Vector born. Vector is said to be defined as an arthropod or any living carrier that transports an infectious agent to a susceptible individual which can be further divided into mechanical vector born and biological vector born. Mechanical vector born includes this vector carries the agent on its body, may be feet or through its gastrointestinal tract, passively excreting the vector without any multiplication. Biological vector born is the agent where it undergoes replication and or development in the vector and hence requires incubation period. Airborne, which includes droplet nuclei. Tiny particles which represent dried residue droplet. Droplets remain floating in the air. Some may retain virulence, others may lose infectivity and virulence, which is seen in tuberculosis, influenza, chickenpox, and measles. Dust transmission. 
larger particles expelled during talking coughing sneezing settle out on carpets furniture clothing bedding a variety of infecting agents are reported in hospital beds wards living rooms or houses during dusting sweeping bed making the agents become part of the air or they become airborne fomite born fomites are inanimate articles or substances other than water or food contaminated by the infectious discharges from a patient and capable of harboring and transferring agents to a healthy person fomites include soiled clothes towels pens pencils taps surgical dressings the example of this disease transmitted by fomites include diphtheria typhoid fever dysentery eye and skin infections transmission by fingers and hands fingers and hands are the most common agents transferring infections hands and fingers act as media of transfer of agents to food examples of them include typhoid fever dysentery etc lack of hygiene is implicated by cleanliness of hands poor sanitation hygiene and lack of cleanliness result in person to person transmission of disease causing agents susceptible host so susceptibility of the host is another factor determining the transmission of disease causing agents sequence of events occurring in the host includes first is the portal of entry then next is a site selection portal exit and survival of organism portal of entry the agent can find entry through respiratory tract alimentary canal genito urinary tract skin some organisms may have multiple ways of entry site selection so once entered into the body the organism searches for appropriate site or tissue for multiplication and its survival then portal exit the agent must find a way out of the body and reach a new host for the transmission if there is no way out the infection becomes dead end infection as in rabies survival of organism the disease causing agent must survive in the external environment till it finds a new host the infection becomes apparent only after a period of incubation the period of incubation is defined as the time interval between the invasion by an infectious agent and appearance of first sign and symptom of disease in question the agent multiplies in the host and when it reaches sufficient density health equilibrium is disturbed and the disease starts appearing to summarize health is a state of complete physical mental and social well-being and not merely an absence of disease or infirmity with an ability to lead a socially and economically productive life so the dimensions of health include physical mental social spiritual emotional vocational and the others health is said to be a multifactorial depends on the interplay of number of complex factors which exert their influence on lifestyle of an individual both generic and environmental factors interact with health of an individual and may either promote or cause deleterious effects on health coming to determinants of health they are biological behavioral and social cultural conditions environmental socio economic conditions health services age and gender communicable diseases are all transmitted from the reservoir to the susceptible host there are various modes of transmission which we have seen before so to conclude health can be protected by primary secondary and tertiary care which includes good environment cleanliness hygiene by taking good diet by taking proper timely immunization following the good habits by taking the health care services so if each individual takes care of his health the country will be productive and the nation will flourish thank you